This is continuing coverage of the trial of Karen Reed from the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. Now, back to the courtroom. Do you recognize your dash cam video being on the, the left of the screen? Um, yes, sir. Okay. Have you looked at Sergeant Good's dash cam video, which is squared up on the right side of the screen? No. You've never seen it? No. Okay. Does it appear to you that these are two different perspectives of the same scene? In other words, you see the car or the SUV on the left side of the screen right here, correct? Yes, sir. See that same SUV right there, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Does that appear to be two different perspectives, two different angles? Yes. Of basically the same thing? Yes. Okay. I want to draw your attention to the individual's to the left of the SUV right here. There's a person wearing a hood with fur on it. Is that Kerry Roberts? Do you remember? I, I don't know. Okay. There appears to be another person with a darker jacket standing just in front of that person with the hood and fur. You see that person? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to focus on the person in the darker jacket. Sure. I believe, and and the only reason I'm asking you to to focus at this point is because I want to try to play this just once and see if you recognize what's depicted in the video. Sure. What I expect you may see is this person move out uh, out of sight behind the SUV, and then in the background, there's an SUV parked in the driveway. Pay special attention to that portion of the SUV and see if you see that person in the dark jacket pass from right to left in front of that SUV as if they're going to the house. Let's go ahead and play it. Go ahead and pause it. Have you seen the person in the dark jacket uh, leave the, the view? Yes. Did she appear to go behind the, the SUV? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and play it. <laughs> go ahead and stop the track. And now I'm going to ask to draw your attention to that car with snow on it. Pay special attention to that car as the, the film continues, continues to run. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you see a person standing in front of the car? It appears to be a person, yes. Walking from right to left? Yes. Would that be toward the house? Uh, Yes, it would be. Okay. And also, if you wouldn't mind switching your perspective, now you're looking more at the front of the house. Continue watching the film and see if you see that same person walking toward the house. Did you see that? No, I didn't see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I saw the okay. shadow, yes. Right. Shadow of a person yes. walking toward the front of the house. Yes. That was Jennifer McCabe going into the house, wasn't it? I have no idea. Was it a person going into the house? It was a person, yes. Did you give anybody any permission to go into the house? No, not my own. Would you think that um, a witness in a homicide scene... We can go ahead and raise the lights. Thank you. Would you think that a witness at a homicide scene uh, being allowed to go into a house uh, to make contact with other witnesses? I didn't know it was a homicide scene, sir. If I could, if I could finish my, my question. Do you think it's appropriate for a witness at a potential homicide scene, an unconscious person scene, whatever, crime scene, yes. to make contact with other witnesses and begin discussing the situation unsupervised? Can you rephrase that question, sir? Do you think that's an appropriate thing to have happen? I, 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 I have no answer for that, sir. I, I, don't, I don't know what, you, what you're asking. Officer Seraf, when you go to a crime scene, yes, sir. one of the first things that you'd want to do is secure the scene and separate witnesses so that interviews could be conducted, correct? Sure. You wouldn't want witnesses just cavorting together and getting their story straight, right? Correct. You'd want to avoid that at all costs, yes. right? Yes. And why is that? So they can't 
collaborate their, their uh, story. Yet there was a woman, sorry, there was a person walking from the area where a body was found in the lawn of a house, walking into the house to make contact with other individuals, correct? It appeared that way, yes, sir. Does that seem appropriate to you? No. Of course not. <clears throat> We've talked a bit about what you did and didn't hear at the scene from my client. At any point when you were at that location, did you hear my client repeating the phrase, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him? She said, um, I hit him? No, I didn't hear that. You never heard her whisper it, yell it, say it, or otherwise? Not that I, not that I recall. If you, heard that, if you had heard that statement, you likely would have written it down, wouldn't you? Yes. You likely would have reported that to Trooper Proctor the next day, wouldn't you? Yes. You likely would have mentioned it in your grand jury testimony, correct? Yes. And you did none of those things because you did not hear that statement, correct? I did not hear that, no. Sir, you were at 34 Fairview for more than an hour before you cleared the scene, right? Yes, sir. You were at the location of the body of John O'Keefe. Yes. In other words, you just didn't stay in your cruiser. You walked out to where John O'Keefe was. No, I was I was in my cruiser at um, at different times. I, I, I... Must have been a bad question. Okay. You didn't just stay in your cruiser. At points, you got out of your cruiser, walked over, made contact with the women, and oh. you were standing next to the body. Yes. And you were obviously looking around. You noticed noticed some footprints. Yes. And you even noticed some lack of footprints. That's right? correct. So you were being observant at the area of the body. Yes. And the area adjacent to the body. Yes. You were looking for anything that might have been out of place? Yes. Anything of any evidentiary value, correct? Yes. You never saw or otherwise observed, located a single piece of taillight material, did you? No. You certainly didn't see 45 pieces of broken plastic or taillight material, did you? No. You never located or otherwise observed John O'Keefe's missing shoe? No. Or any other clothing of his? I didn't, no. Officer Sharaf, did you ever think to look inside the house? No. For that missing shoe? No. That never crossed your mind? No. Do you think that might have been a smart thing to do at the time? Objection, Your Honor. Rephrase the question. Sure. Do you think that would have been appropriate protocol when dealing with a body laying on a lawn that is partially unclothed to look inside the house of the lawn? No. You didn't think that would have been an appropriate protocol? No. For you or anybody else? No. Obviously, you did not conduct a search of that house, did you? No. And you're aware that to this day, no law enforcement officer ever conducted a search of that house? I'm not aware of that. Yeah, just a moment, Your Honor. Yes. <coughs> no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything, Ms. Talali? Briefly, Your Honor. Okay. Morning, sir. Morning. You were asking questions. You were shown a, uh, a dispatch log. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, dispatch log, as far as uh, the Canton Police Department is concerned, are you aware of sort of how or when or who creates that? Yes. And, and can you explain to the jury sort of how that document sort of comes into being? So when a call comes in, um, an officer is at the desk and um, you know, usually the first thing they do would do is dispatch, get people going to the scene and get everybody rolling as far as if they need FD, police, um, whatever resources they need. And basically then um, type in um, what the call is um, and who's going. 
So fair to say it's more important to get assets allocated to a scene, especially in the case of an emergency, which is why someone's calling 911, than to ensure that the dispatch time is correct down to the set. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> you were asked some questions about different things uh, that you heard the defendant say, correct? That's correct. And uh, you were shown specifically some grand jury testimony from April of 2022 in which you indicated uh, during that testimony that the defendant stated, this is my fault. Yes. And is that based on your memory of what she said? Yes. And you also testified yesterday uh, along the same lines, correct? Correct. What you testified to before this jury, as far as your memory, is that accurate as to what happens uh, on that scene, January 29th, 2022. Yes. Now, prior to this call, uh, did you know Kerry Roberts? No. Did you know Karen Reed? No. Did you know John O'Keefe? No. Did you know Jennifer McKay? No. Uh, based on what you've seen as far as the uh, dash camera, would you be able to differentiate between Jennifer McKay or Kerry Roberts uh, from that dash camera footage? No. Now, while you were on scene, uh, did you see anybody uh, from 34 Fairview Road uh, from that address come outside? No. Did you see anybody from any address on that entire street for the entire 90 minutes that you were there come outside? No. Now, you were asked some questions about some uh, different addresses on Fairview, whether they be 32 or 35. Do you know where either 32 or 35 is located in relation to 34? It will be next to each other in sequential order. Nothing for Nothing wrong. Thank you. All right. You're all set, officer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Lally, who is your next witness? You're on the call with the call officer, Stephen Mullaney, to the stand. Okay. Stephen Mullaney. Right hand. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you give in the court and jury in the case now in hearing should be truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. You can stand or sit, sir, whatever is more comfortable. Just make sure you speak into the microphone, please. Okay, whenever you're ready, Mr. Lally. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Could you uh, please state your name and spell your last name for the uh, Stephen Mullaney, M U L L A N E Y. And uh, how are you employed, sir? I am employed by the Canton Police Department as a patrolman. How long have you been uh, a patrolman for the Canton Police? Since uh, July 2020 and a uh, full-time officer since August 2021. And if I could call your attention to the uh, evening of January 28th, 2022 into the morning of January 29th, 2022. Were you working on that occasion? Yes, I was working the 11.45 p.m. to 7.45 a.m. patrol shift. And uh, were you dispatched to a call shortly after uh, 6 a.m. on the 29th? Yes, I was. And where were you dispatched to and what was that in regards? Uh, 34, Fairview uh, Road for a... Uh, unresponsive party. Now, if I could turn back just for a second, as far as uh, when you're assigned as, as far as a patrolman with can police, are there different sort of geographic sectors within the town to which you're assigned? Yep. I was assigned to the east sector. And it's Fairview Road within that east sector? Uh, it's the west se sector. Um, so you were assigned to the east sector, but dispatched to a call in the west sector. Is that Cor correct? Correct. Okay, you know why that was? Uh, yes. Uh, east the east sector backs up the west sector. Um, prior to this, on uh, the 28th, uh, going into the 29th, were you why, why don't you hold on a minute for the? Okay. 
Go ahead, Ms. Tulele. Oh, thank you. Uh, so on the 28th, going into the 29th, uh, what, if any, awareness did you have as far as the, the weather forecast or, or sort of what was, what was predicted as coming? I believe around midnight it, started, it began to snow. And that's while you're on shift, is that correct? Yes. Do, when you're on shift and you're on patrol, uh, particularly when there's a weather situation as, as far as snow or something like that, um, what is it that you're, you're doing on patrol? Well, I stayed in the parking lot that shift, so didn't get stuck anywhere. And as far as the snow that was predicted and the snow that fell, um, how, how much precipitation, what kind of a storm was it? Uh, well, by the morning, it was pretty, pretty heavy snow. And by the morning, by, by what time? Uh, well, around 6 a.m. So by the time that you were dispatched to that call, we were just talking about the snow was picking up and getting heavier. Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> as you were, um, so you were at the station when you received the dispatch, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And um, where is, well, about how far away is Fairview Road from where you were at the station? Um, mile and a half, two miles. And can you describe for the jury sort of the route that you took going from the station to Fairview Road that yep. way? I took a right onto Washington Street from the station, and then I took a right onto Dedham Street from Washington Street, a left onto Cedar Crest from Dedham, and then a left onto Fairview Road from Cedar Crest. And so Fairview Road uh, runs um, sort of between two other more <coughs> major roads in Camp. Fair to say? Yes. And you mentioned Cedar Crest, is that correct? Yes. Cedar Crest is off of Dedham? Correct. And so what is the other sort of major road on the other sort of intersecting side of Fairview Road? Chapman Street. Okay. Um, so when you're coming um, from Cedar Crest onto Fairview, about how far into Fairview is 34? Uh, two houses down on the right. Uh, so the house would have been on your right, is that correct? Correct. And in addition to yourself, who, if anyone else uh, from your department, was, was dispatched to this call as well? Officer Saraf. And um, who, if anyone, arrived first? Uh, Officer Saraf uh, had arrived prior to my arrival. And Officer Saraf, as far as which direction was his cruiser facing? The same as yours, directly at yours, or something else? I, I don't recall. You recall seeing Officer Saraf uh, during your on route time, sort of between the station and arriving on the scene? Uh, I do not know. Now, as far as when you're driving from the station to uh, the scene, what, if anything, do you recall about sort of the road conditions, visibility, anything like that? Uh, visibility was uh, difficult. I don't uh, exactly recall the how far you could see, but it was definitely coming down. And at this point in time, on January 29th, just after 6 a.m., uh, what, what is sort of the lighting conditions? Has the sun come up yet? Is it dark out, or, or what's going on? It was still dark out. And if you recall, what was sort of the vehicular traffic on the roadway between the station and your arrival on Fairview Road? I don't recall there being any traffic. Um, now, as far as when you are coming to the scene, do you recall whether or not you had to activate sort of your lights or your sirens or anything like that? Uh, I believe I would have used the blue lights. <laughs> you recall using sirens? Uh, I do not recall whether or not I use sirens. And if you know about how much time elapsed between the time that you received the call and the time that you arrive on Fairview? Um, three minutes, approximately. And when you arrive there, what, if anything, is uh, sort of the first thing that you see? Uh, I saw Officer Saraf uh, towards like the the front lawn, um, kind of surrounding uh, the victim. Um, there's a, a couple other people as well. And the fire department was uh, on arrival right about the same time. And so, beyond yourself and Officer Saraf from Can Police, were there other sort of uh, town assets that were dispatched to this call as well? Uh, the fire department. And when the fire, when you say the fire department, uh, how many sort of vehicles or how, what was their response as far as? Uh, I believe they had a fire engine and uh, ambulance. And uh, do you recall if the fire ambulance, I'm sorry, the fire engine and the ambulance came from uh, sort of the uh, same side as you from Cedar Crest, or did they come into the scene from the same, uh, from the opposite side as far as from uh, 
Like they were, they came, they had come down Chapman Street to Fairview, and they were facing towards Cedar Crest. Now, so you arrive there, you see uh, Officer Sarif and, and people from the fire department, correct? Yes. And uh, you indicated that you saw uh, a person on sort of uh, person on the ground. Is that correct? Yes. And just for clarity purposes, at some point subsequent to this, you were able to identify the person that was on the ground. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That was John O'Keefe. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And <clears throat> where uh, the other people that you indicated were there, where were they in relation to John O'Keefe? Uh, I think I, I don't really recall where everybody was uh, upon my arrival, but I think everyone was kind of like in the vicinity around the, um, like the curb to the street. Now, as far as when you're first arriving and you're pulling up to the scene, uh, were you able to see Mr. O'Keefe on the ground uh, at that point, or did I had to get I, had to, I saw people around him, but I had to get closer before I saw the victim on the ground. And so, the other people that you saw around him were they kneeling down, standing up, or something else? Uh, I believe Officer Sarif was still standing up. I don't recall anyone else. Um, and so fair to say you saw our Officer Sarif standing up near Mr. O'Keefe before you actually saw Mr. O'Keefe, correct? Yes, yes. Now, this particular area where uh, you saw Officer Sarif standing up and Officer O'Keefe, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Keefe, Officer O'Keefe on the ground, um, what, if any, sort of additional ambient lighting did you observe in that area? Was there any street lights or anything like that around there? Uh, not that I recall. Now... In addition to Officer Sarif, uh, at some point did you encounter uh, some other individuals or civilian uh, people on scene? Uh, yep, uh, Ms. Jen McCabe. And um, in addition to Ms. McCabe, were there any other uh, female parties there as well? Uh, yeah, uh, Carrie Roberts. And in addition to Ms. Roberts, was there any other uh, female parties there? Um, yes, um, Ms. Reed. And uh, just to be clear, do um, you see Ms. Reed in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Could you identify where, as to where she's seated or an article of clothing she's wearing? Uh, black dress. That's the record reflect identification of the defendant. Yes. Now, um, prior to uh, this call, did you have any prior sort of familiarity with Karen Reed? No. Okay. With uh, John O'Keefe? No. Uh, with Jennifer McKay? No. With Kerry Roberts? No. And when you arrive and you make those sort of initial observations, where is it that you go? What, if anything, do you do? Uh, the fire department began uh, their life-saving measures, and uh, at one point we were able to get them onto the stretcher uh, or onto a uh, backboard, I believe it's called, and then uh, onto a stretcher. And what, if any, involvement did you have with that? I assisted the fire department in uh placing them on the backboard and then helping uh, get them onto the stretcher. Now, as far as you mentioned that the, um, where, Ms. where you came and, and located Mr. O'Keefe, you recall uh, sort of what position his body was in when you first observed him? Uh, he was uh, lying face, uh, face up as was back on the ground. And uh, you recall where he was in relation to the roadway, if you could tell? Uh, yeah, he's, he's on the front lawn. So, uh, I didn't know exactly where the curb was, but I would think about, you know, approximately 10 feet from the curb. And so you mentioned that you couldn't tell exactly where the curb was. Why, why is that? There was snow on the ground. Um, so the snow sort of covered the curb at that time that you're there. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, but you approximate it was about 10 <clears throat> feet into the lawn. Yeah. And... Um, the snow on the ground that you observed at that time when you uh, first arrived, about how much snow had accumulated on the ground? I'd say at that point, approximately six inches. And what, if any, snow did you observe uh, on any part of Mr. O'Keefe's body uh, when you first saw him? Uh, there was really no snow, but you could tell that uh, he had been in the conditions. Uh, it was almost as if... Um, uh, it was... Um, like water, kind of like frozen on, kind of was to his face. And did you make any observations, or what if any observations did you make beyond his face as far as sort of the rest of his body? Uh, I don't recall really any other observations. 
Do you recall how he was dressed? Uh, I do not. Do you recall any, what if any snow was on <clears throat> any other part of his body? I do not. Now, as far as uh, Mr. O'Keefe uh, was concerned, what if any observations did you make as far as any injuries uh, to Mr. O'Keefe at that initial time? I did not recall any injuries. Uh, so nothing stood out to you, is that correct? No, correct. And um, you assist the fire department getting him onto a backboard, correct? Yes. And where did Mr. O'Keefe go from there? To the ambulance. And did you go to the ambulance as well? Uh, not that I recall, no. So fire department sort of takes over care of Mr. O'Keefe at that point. Yes. Uh, so after Mr. O'Keefe is, is lifted up, um, when he's lifted up, what, if anything, did you observe as far as the grounds uh, that had been underneath Mr. O'Keefe and where he was? Um, I didn't recall anything. Did I observe anything. No. No. Do you recall even looking sort of in that area? No, I, I think... Uh, he was in front of me, so I, I wouldn't have seen what was under him. And so after Mr. O'Keefe is taken by members of the fire department over to the ambulance, uh, what is it that you did? Uh, Officer Sarif, at that point, we were trying to identify the victim, so I spoke to Ms. McCabe. And um, without sort of anything that Ms. McCabe told you, about how long a period of time did you talk to Ms. McCabe gathering information? Um, Approximately two minutes. And uh, who, if anyone else, did you speak with attempting to gather information regarding Mr. Oakes? Uh, Ms. McCabe is the only one I recall speaking to. Now, as far as the uh, defendant, Ms. Reed, um, did you, what, if anything, do you recall her sort of doing as, as you're on scene and as you're going about what you're trying to, to do? Uh, she was screaming, um, is that my boyfriend? Is he dead? And when you say screaming in a fairly loud voice, correct? Very, very loud, yes. And as far as um, that sort of phraseology, as far as is he dead, uh, how many times was that something she said? Once, more than once, or something else? Uh, repeated many times. And with the same sort of volume that she had said it with, as you described the first time? Yes. More raw courtroom coverage of the trial of Karen Reed is coming up from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Press subscribe so you don't miss a minute.